good couple of days for me, to be honest, or any United fan. All of the, you know, debate and controversy around Sheikh Jassim, unfortunately, from the Qatari group, walking away and withdrawing from the process because it was so protracted and it probably seemed like, or you, or you probably got the feeling, most likely the Glazers didn't want to go for his offer, even though it was 100% cash offer. He's going to wipe the debt. He was going to give the most money for the shares that are available right now. It always seemed as if the Glazers didn't really want to sell the club in full. They wanted just to have some bit of investment and obviously still control the majority of it. So they've done that with this bidder now, Surgeon Ratcliffe. And the story around it, when this originally came out, was that the deal would be ratified by Thursday. So for some reason, the story leaks over the weekend that Sheikh Jassim is withdrawing from the process. Then Sir Jim Ratcliffe is the front runner, um, you know, a couple of days later. And then they tell us all these amazing things that he's going to do, take over the sporting side, implement this, implement that. Um, then there's a weird story that gets floated about Sir Jim Ratcliffe never being a fan of United signing Casemiro. Like, just some nonsense to kind of appease the fans and put a bit of good PA good positive PR spin on his um, bid obviously because most people wanted the full sale and the fact that he's coming in with partial ownership is a super 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 underwhelming and then later on in the week we get um, you know some news coming out that they're going to ratify the deal this coming Thursday and that he'll be able to implement some of the changes so he'll be able to start working for the club by the end of the week and now all out of the blue we got confirmation from a few sources that there is no deal being ratified by the end of the week. That's not happening. Um, it's going to get done sometime soon. So it is quite amazing to see the lengths at which the Glazers will go to to just refuse to relinquish any semblance of control in the club. They just don't want to do it. They just refuse to do it. It's just not something that they want to do. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna draw this out as long as they can. And then when they're good and ready, that's when whoever's going to take over, whether it's partial ownership or full ownership, will get a chance to do so. But until they decide, nothing's moving. So this is courtesy of Sky Sports News. It says, May United wait for Sergio Rackliff deal goes on, but the end game in sight ahead of Thursday's board meeting. So there's a board meeting on Thursday where it's meant to be ratified, but there is no indication that it will be ratified on that board meeting. So it's just all up in the air. Who knows what's flipping happening? Um, let's read the actual article here, courtesy of Sky Sports News. Let's scroll down here. It says, uh, Rackliff expected to purchase 25% of the club um, for $1.3 billion in the deal that would give his company Enios control over the main United's footballing operations. I still have a big um, press X to doubt feeling about this because the Glazers, you know, almost vice-like grip on everything concerning United, on their reluctance to implement any positive changes structurally to the club that would allow us to be more successful on the pitch. Look how long it took for them to appoint a DOF, Director of Football, and even John Murto isn't really a director of football. He was somebody that was working internally at the club who just got promoted to that role. They refused to hire somebody externally who could do it. They brought in Ralph Ragnick, who was a bit too honest and blunt for their liking. And then they, you know, sacked him the moment he basically spoke out of turn. They don't really like a lot of outsiders coming into the club and trying to modernize things or, you know, put in, implement better processes to make us more successful on the, on the pitch. They like the way the club is run, the way it is, however haphazard it is. And I just don't think, even with 25%, and again, who knows if the 25% he's getting is 25% like voting rights, is it 25% of just shares on a particular stock exchange? We're not really too sure. But if I'm judging Ratcliffe, I'm going to be putting this stuff in writing to make sure what I can actually do with the 25%, because I've got a feeling He's approaching this with good faith, probably thinking that they're going to, you know, um, honor the agreement. But most likely, I'm anticipating as soon as he does, you know, ratify the deal and it gets rubber stamped, I'm anticipating somewhere along the line, you'll start hearing stories about Sir Jim Ratcliffe complaining about how hard it is to work with the Glazers, about how difficult it is to get anything done. I'm sure that's going to happen. You'll start hearing leaks approaching it because the Glazers aren't like normal owners you know they don't it's like normal owners who just want to take money out of the club as long as you're making the money they don't care what you do with the football side of things the glazers kind of want to take money out of the club they also don't want to invest in the club and they also want to have control over all the football inside decision making process it's really odd the, the the almost control freak aspect of them um it continues here it says it's a very complicated deal, but I think that this is why it's taking a little bit longer than anticipated. That's bullshit. It's been going on for a year now, right? A year plus it's approaching. 
Uh, it's not that complicated, to be honest. They, they've known their way into having investors or solar car for a long time. They're just stretching it out because they don't really want to sell. They want investment, but they want it on their terms. It continues here. Um, we're approaching the end game, and I think that is going to be Sergeant Ratcliffe buying the least major minority stake to begin with. Um, another oh, and then I think the, the basically the assumption is here um, in the article, basically what they're saying in that paragraph I just read. There's a story going around that allegedly Sergeant Ratcliffe went to buy the whole amount, hasn't had didn't have the money to to buy it. So now, as a way to get his foot in the door, he's going to purchase the 25% and then eventually, over the years, purchase the other remaining bits and then get a controlling stake in the club, eventually taking over. I don't think that's possible. I personally think the Glazers never wanted to sell the club in full. I think they wanted to float, um, the you know, they wanted to, they wanted to get, gauge the interest on the market, which obviously I'm sure is somewhat illegal, especially if you do it, if you, especially if your club is publicly listed, to just float it and then withdraw the, you know, the opportunity for someone to buy it in full is a bit odd. I would imagine so. There is maybe some legality issues there. But I think they always wanted to float the idea of selling a club, um, not sell it, but wanted to get a lot of money for a small stake of quote unquote investment and then over the years what they could do is that they could kind of double triple quadruple dip and keep selling the same amount or maybe less of the club for more than previous years because what we have to consider is let's imagine in a scenario which is very unlikely but let's imagine a scenario where Sergeant Ratcliffe actually does a good job he comes in implements some good changes with that 25 percent controlling stake he has in the club the club then becomes successful. We win a Champions League. We win a Premier League. Blah, blah, blah. The next time somebody tries to purchase a 25% of the club, it's going to be worth far more than what Sir Jim Ratcliffe paid when he came in and the club was where it's at now at the moment. So I have a feeling the Glazers want to do that. They just want to keep, you know, selling little bits as the club keeps improving. And then eventually they'll probably get to that magic 10 billion mark. That's what some people on the inside and all the ITKs and shit and people with their ear to the ground are saying that the Glazers' actual number that they're not really, you know, saying aloud, but if someone brings that number to them, they're going to sell, is 10 billion. I think Sheikh Jassim offered, I think, like five to six or something, which is still above the uh, market valuation of the club. I think the valuation of the club is like 3 billion, but Sheikh Jassim offered five to six, but the Glazers actually want 10 billion. But they could probably get 10 billion if they sell bits of the club a longer, like a 10 year process, a period, sorry. And if the club is successful along that 10 period, every piece they sell will be more expensive than the previous piece. So, you know, it's a bit shit for us fans. No, it's not a bit shit. It's the worst thing ever, to be honest, because in the process, it could also go wrong and it could bleed our club dry and cripple us and put us in the worst position that we're in at the moment. And then by the time someone takes over, it's going to take even more money than it would do now to kind of get us back to the level of competing. But hey, what do I know? Continue with the article. Another indication that Ratcliffe deal for United is getting closer is a report from Bloomberg which claims Ineos will hold a credit update call on Monday, the f or Monday at 3 p.m. to update the shareholders. The, the petrochemicals company is not commenting. Okay, cool. Thursday's Man United board meeting um, is a standard practice, has not been called for specific reasons to discuss the deal. They are usually partial, um, but no, they're usually partly virtual because the Glazer family are based in the States. It's also unlikely that there'll be a resolution for the strategic review, which sparked a long um, winded takeover race involving Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim. Sorry, um, after it was announced last November. The Qatari bid led by Sheikh Jassim withdrew from the process last weekend, eight months after initially declaring its plans to buy the club. It is fought and was only an offer for 100% of the club. So, so there's some people out there that are alleging, and as you see there's a timeline here, Curtis Sky Sports News, the actual, the actual process started in November 22nd, 2022. So it's fast approaching a year now basically and still the club hasn't been sold so you can see how much of a nonsense it all was but there are some people out there that are still holding out hope um who, and basically saying that the way the news was leaked over the weekend made it seem odd so most likely maybe some people are suggesting that maybe Sergeant Ratcliffe has people in the press or in the media that purposely put the news out there that he was close to sealing the deal over the weekend because they knew not a lot of journalists could be around to correct that news until the Monday and then by then that might put pressure on the Glazers and that Sheikh Jassim is still involved in the race who knows but this is kind of the sentiment that is existing a lot of fans out there are just desperate for a change and they're desperate to cling on to any type of hope so one of them is this quote um taken from mufc mpb account 
that says some key figures inside the deal also remain skeptical that Sheikh Jassim bin Hamid Al Tahini has entirely withdrawn his interest from the club. Sources close to Qatari, however, have reaffirmed their instances, their insistence, sorry, that he told the Glazers last week he'd quit the process. So some people are saying Sheikh Jassim is still in the race. Um, he's just pulled away as a as a as a negotiation tactic to kind of put pressure on the Glazers because he's walking away with the whole entire cash deal that he was putting on the table. And some people are suggesting no, he's told them last week, like I gave you a deadline, you didn't agree to it, now I'm walking away. Which I think makes more sense, especially when you marry up with the story that has come out in the last two days about the Glazers allegedly feeling um very offended or feeling attacked or something or judged because of Sheikh Jassim's earlier comment when he first tried to buy the club of trying to restore United to its former glories. Um, the Glazers allegedly didn't like that statement that came out from Sheikh Jassim. And essentially, if I remember correctly at the time, they even brought out, put out a statement that said, all bidders should refrain from commenting on the current ownership or something. So it's basically them telling off Sheikh Jassim and telling him to shut his fucking mouth. So... As dumb as that is, and as petty as that is, I would assume, uh, you know, family like the Glazers who've gone out of their way to absolutely destroy this great club of mine, they would most likely really would feel offended that somebody is kind of, you know, openly judging their tenure and kind of basically calling into it, calling it, calling it into question and saying that it was a horrible ownership and then saying that they're going to do a far better job. It wouldn't surprise me if they said, "Hey, you know what? We don't like this, so we're going to not but give you the club now out of spite." It wouldn't surprise me. And then, you know, obviously, Sergio Rackoff is the perfect person to kind of go for because he's willing to be malleable. He's willing to bend to whatever demand the Glazers have just so he can be the person that can say, I own me United. Because you'd imagine a lot of these guys, especially people at this sort of level, you know, you've got all the money in the world. You bought all the things that you need. You're advancing in age. The only thing left really is your legacy. So if you can be a childhood quote-unquote Man United fan and say that you own a part of the club or that you're a co-owner of the club, it's going to be something that will, you know, make you rest easy when your finally your time finally does come. So it wouldn't surprise me that the Glazers would prefer to go with Jim Ratcliffe because he's more malleable. Um, and obviously, in kind of contrast to um, Sheikh Jassim, um, he's also going to only he's go, he's going to be just happy with the partial ownership because of his legacy and what that's going to mean for the future of his family and whatnot. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm not look feeling optimistic. I've all but given up on the Qatari group thing, even though that was the one chance we had to really restore United back to its former glories. Most likely, Sheikh Jassim, sorry, um, Sergeant Ratcliffe is going to be the one who's going to win this bid and win this race. It makes a lot more sense because I felt like the Glazers never wanted to sell the club in full anyway. So why 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 not sell the club to a guy um so why not sell 25 percent sorry to a guy who you know wants that control for a lot of money and then you can still basically run the club how you want but then have this guy feel like he's a glorified employee essentially so let's see what happens let's see what runs through but i'm not feeling optimistic in the slightest i'm not feeling optimistic in the slightest